Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us for today's technical topic webinar. Um, this one will be about digital twins in manufacturing. Um, we have Dr. Melind uh, with us today. He's, um, he's currently online. He's our course coordinator and lecturer uh, for mechanical and civil engineering. Uh, these webinars are recorded. Um, so everyone will be sent a recording of the presentation and the PDF slides um, afterwards. Um, for our technical topic webinars, we also um, offer a free uh, digital certificate of attendance, um, which you can uh, request by filling out um, a form at the end of the webinar. We will provide you um, the link for that. Uh, we've got, um, uh, this is our agenda, agenda for today, um, so we'll just do a slight introduction. Um, we'll cover what is a digital twin, um, how does it work, uh, three levels of digital twins, uh, benefits of digital twins, um, applications, uh, tools, and some, t uh, some challenges, the road ahead, and uh, we'll also have a Q&A section at the end. Um, it's good to see we've already got a few people that have been using the, the chat box, so thanks for that. We like to have these um, webinars as interactive as possible, um, so feel free to use um, the chat box um, as much as you want um, if you want to contribute any thoughts or comments during the webinar. Um, so without any further ado, I'd like to um, hand over to Dr. Melind. After a long time, uh, disruption. So let me begin, guys. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Balit Sitpura. I'm actually a lecturer and coordinator here at EIT. And uh, I have actually, you know, been handling this mechanical and civil engineering disciplines here at EIT. And I'm, I'm looking up to the disciplines called Bachelor's, Master's, and Doctorate of Engineering. And uh, I joined EIT a couple of years ago after teaching in a variety of institutions because. Uh, EIT is more focused on engineering and it offers industry relevant uh, courses which leads to you know proper internships and uh, job uh, to the students. So let me start with my topic uh, which is uh, digital twin. So what is a digital twin? Uh, we know the word twin right like identical kids. So similar to that uh, digital twin is nothing but it's actually a virtual model or virtual representation of a real life object or system. So the main feature here is uh, that you know uh, it uses real time data, it uses simulations and it uses a range of machine learning technologies to help decision making. So for example in this photo here uh, you can see uh, is actually uh, uh, the pump uh, pump is actually shown as a digital model and this one uh, which is a real model Yes, I'm still here. Uh, let's start with the next one. So, uh, the next slide I'm going to show you. So my slide is changing. Can you hear me at least? Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Just trying to 
That's good. The slides aren't changing. Oh yes, I can see my change slide. So there are a variety of other definitions of digital twin, which you could see here. And uh, basically NASA in 2012, they actually utilized the digital twin as an integrated uh, system to their you know, spacecraft uh, flying objects all of the flying objects and they trialed it first. And uh, then there was there were quite a few researchers which, which you can see are mentioned here. All of these actually tried, you know, digital twin as a main technology into their research. And they proved that it, it is quite effective. And moving forward, uh, so, uh, you know, investigating what is digital twin. So mainly it's a forefront of the industrial 4.0. And fourth industrial revolution is all about, you know, machines talking to machines and making their own self decisions. And uh, it's basically effortless integration between, you know, physical and virtual systems. So, for example, NASA uh, would have created a virtual version of their rocket, uh, which they can see real time. So when their actual rotate, rocket, uh, which is here, which is the physical model, which is launching, they can see real-time data of the same rocket in the in the digital model. So it starts from not only for uh, on manufacturing, but from design, from manufacturing, from use, and in the service. So when your model is in service, uh, throughout the phase, throughout the life cycle of the system, it is quite useful. So how can you facilitate uh, digital twin through obviously advanced data analytics, analytics and Internet of Things? So. <clears throat> Moving forward in terms of technological development of digital twin, starting from a very, very basic uh, computer, uh, which was just, you know, adding up some basic sums, uh, integration and stuff like that. So 1946, they invented the first computer, which was basically used only for scientific computing. So it was basically a very basic computer and main application of it was text digitizer. So they were like libraries of uh, resources really, really good resources, which are just lying there on the shelves. They converted them all into digital uh, version. And then came the next phase, which was 1981. That's when the PC was invented. So digitalization actually entered at a personal level. When employees were working, engineers were working in the industry, they actually used computers to draw up things, to do run some basic programs. And it was more like a functional digitalization. Then came 1991 when they invented the internet. And at internet level, it all started with, you know, enterprise level. The big companies just invested into internet and they used internet, uh, some softwares. And at a business level, they applied the computers and different uh, digital controls. But then came after 2000s. And in 2000s, they actually started creating cyber physical system integration. So it, is, it was at an industry level. So the whole industry, for example, pump manufacturing companies or maybe rocket manufacturing, uh, some of the uh, big companies like NASA, they would be applying digital uh, evolution at, at their industry level throughout the world. What they used was IoT, which is Internet of Things, cloud computing, uh, big data, digital twin, etc. So the entire industrial ecology was digitalized. That was the revolution uh, which we are experiencing now in many, many fields, especially in engineering. So when you talk about digital twin, you can't really miss Michael Grace, who is actually a professor in a Florida university. And he's the one who actually invented uh, the word called information mirroring. So he was actually trialing and creating virtual model of a physical system. And uh, you, he actually did some research but no one was actually noticing what he was doing un until the NASA actually took that model and defined it as a digital twin. And they actually used it in their US Air Force. And then onwards, all of these other companies like Simmons and different universities started researching in that. And right now it is a really, really fast evolving field, as you can see. Now, uh, 
digital team in between in terms of manufacturing uh, it 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 was like a perfect match a digital twin was really really needed in manufacturing due to a lot of factors because in manufacturing there were so many issues and those issues were like uh, like you know inefficient you know inefficiencies of the machines to productivity and uh, uh, manufacturing needed a, a lot of digitalization so many companies struggle to determine what they should be doing to drive and deliver real value both operationally and strategically so uh, let me go to the next slide which is here just give me a sec so uh, let's look at a very basic basic model of a digital twin. So that's, let's say this is your physical asset or a process. It could be a plant or a manufacturing workshop. And uh, what you are actually doing, you are actually creating a digital model identical to your real model. But in order to uh, operate your digital model, you need to give real-time data from physical model to your digital model. Now this real-time data, what the digital model does is it does a lot of analytics, a lot of analysis, and then it feeds back to the physical model. So it optimizes certain parameters. The analytics would you know, result into saying that this pump must be, or a number of pumps must be operated at this temperature, that pressure to get the maximum efficiency and get the maximum production out of your process plan. So, uh, it, it is like that. It's very, very basic uh, in terms of the sketch, which I'm showing. But obviously, in reality, it's a bit more complex. So what are the technologies which are driving it? Mainly virtual reality, which you would have known. VR and AR are driving it. Internet of Things. Internet of Things means every single thing, every single component in the industry is, is connected with some type of sensor and feeding data into your digital model. Big data is another field where you need to collate all the data. Some of the data is just a noise which you need to filter out. So you need to only get the you know, useful data into Axon and do analysis on that and do some cloud computing and apply machine learning principles to actually filter out the data and make usefulness of that out of the data. That's most important. So basically in a digital twin, you are connecting real and virtual worlds, right? And uh, what you are trying to do is you are trying to analyze and simulate the virtual copy of your assets or products. And the main goal here is to optimize a product performance. So, for example, if you are creating a gear or if you are creating some kind of wheels or an engine for, for a particular manufacturer or vehicle producer, you have to optimize your product performance. So it should last longer. It should be costing you the minimum and uh, reliability should be maximum. So those are the goals when you say optimization of a product. Now, how does it work? Yes, the next question. How does it all really work? So you have basically <clears throat> sensors and sensors are actually feeding data uh, to communication channels. And it, they, those communication channels, uh, you know, ensure that, you know, all of the data is correctly platform so that digital platform there uh, that is doing a lot of computations a lot of analysis and in that is actually feeding back to the physical model so it's connected with a physical model and it is giving it certain commands some certain adjustments uh, some process parameters some manufacturing parameters those are changed and adjusted by learning from the sensor data so that's that and uh, going forward with how does it work obviously in a manufacturing process example uh, this is the diagram which shows you uh, schematically how a real machine is actually connected with uh, our digital model so this is your physical model that's your digital model here you can see the real machine is fitted with a lot of sensors can you see the sensors so these are different different sensors which are fitted on the machines taking parameters now uh, remember these are not the sensors only on the machines you sometimes also need the surrounding data like what type of temperature your machines are operating uh, what type of conditions what's the humidity of it so those sensors are also fitted in your workshop in your large workshop 
and those data are also important because your digital model needs as much as data as possible in order to precisely calculate what kind of adjustments need to be made uh, in order to get the maximum productivity, maximum reliability and least amount of waste out of your industry. So sensors obviously feed data into your digital model. Your digital model is doing a lot of analysis and these analysis are going back to actuators. Now these are the actuators fitted on the machines which are doing the adjustments which I was talking about. So these adjustments ensure that you know your machine parameters have been changed <clears throat> and it is operating at an optimum level. So <clears throat> that's the manufacturing example uh, of a digital doing. Now, <clears throat> because I am a lecturer here and I would like to always engage my students, I would like to ask you, these are some of these equipment and some of the technologies I have listed here. What I want you to do is I want you to categorize the equipment and these technologies which are here into appropriate domain. So you can write in the chat message and you can let me know where would the pumps and compressor would go, where would the actuator would go, whether physical or digital. So you need to let me know that. So I'm looking at your chat messages, guys. <clears throat> let me know where would you put each of these items. Yes, Daniel, Emmanuel. Physical would be pumps and compressors, definitely. CNC would be physical. How about others, guys? Come on, it's your chance to shine. Yes, Tata, AutoCAD model would be digital. Kalachi, <clears throat> Saeed, don't worry, Marista. Sorry, I can't read all the names. They are going so fast. <clears throat> Cloud computing is also digital. Absolute, absolutely, it's digital. Cloud computing is also digital. Very, very nice, guys. I can see you have understood in few minutes of my session uh, where each of the items would go. <clears throat> I'm really, really happy, guys, uh, that you could answer my question really correctly. And uh, I think it's time to move <clears throat> to the next slide. All right. <clears throat> First of all, do you know that F1 racing, you know, the Ferraris and all the McLarens, which are you know racing in F1 racing, they each of these brands, when they are racing their cars, they have digital twin. Do you know that? Uh, because in the background, uh, you know, in the pit, they have this huge screen and they have a digital model of the exact same car. While the race is really going on, they actually make some, you know, real-time changes to, to the actual car using the digital model. And that's how they get the maximum output uh, or optimum output in terms of speed, in terms of agility, in terms of, you know, turning on sharp corners. All of this is adjusted in F1 racing. So how do they do it? They actually have obviously the same system. That's your their real F1 racing car. This is fitted fitted with heaps of sensors. You can't believe it how many sensors, how many technologies involved. And that sensors, those sensors are actually giving data to the digital twin, which is running on a giant screen uh, on the other end. And this this digital twin is actually analyzing the data and putting some diagnosis, like what's happening, what's the tire pressure, what's the engine temperature. What's going on with the brake and how about the steering wheel mechanism? All of these things are diagnosed. And some of the you know control signals are actually fed back to the actual product while in the race. Can you believe it? Yes, they are doing it for years. So that kind of technology is already there, which we call digital twin. But we didn't know it's called digital twin. Very good. Moving to the next one, there are three levels of digital twin. Now, the first level which I'm showing you here is a digital model. Now, a digital model is a very simple model. There is a physical object and there is a digital object and there is no connection between them. Uh, for example, uh, if a, a big construction company is uh, building a high-rise apartment, for example, they would produce a digital model, a 3D model on an AutoCAD 
and that is the digital object right and as per that digital model the 3d model they would hire some contractors to build a physical object they just keep looking at digital object and they keep creating that building similar to that if you want to you know manufacture a particular engine you create a 3d model of the engine and you create a physical object by looking at the digital object it means there is no connection you, you just made the digital object first and then you are making physical object later so it's basically a 3d uh, model which you built in autocad nothing else but in digital shadow is the intermediate technology where physical mo object if you make any changes in physical object it feeds into digital object for example in power plants they have this huge control rooms some of the parameters like boiler temperature or production uh, power output if they change it slightly the digital object would be updated automatically but the catch is it doesn't actually give any signal in the reverse direction like if you make any changes into a digital object it doesn't make any changes to the actual physical object so that's called digital shadow and then comes the digital twin we talked about f1 racing and physical object and digital object are continuously communicating uh, so physical object gives data from sensors and digital object is providing uh, the analysis the the optimum and uh, optimum parameters which at which physical object should move so that's digital twin it's a two way communication i hope it makes sense guys thank you now in terms of benefits so what what are the real benefits now going through so, so many number of examples obviously you would have already understood uh, how important it is how how effective and efficient uh, the model would be uh, if you have a digital copy of your physical model so digital twins help manufacturers and engineers complete a great deal for example they can visualize the products in use by real users in real time uh, you can also build a digital thread it means you can you know trace every single movement in your machine refining assumptions you know sometimes we are assuming certain things like you know, for example let's say the workshop have would have temperature room temperature of 20 degrees celsius and that's when i would be running my cnc machine to produce my parts but no the reality is different sometimes it's hot it's 40 degrees celsius and uh, that's why your assumption is wrong while you know manufacturing your parts so you need to refine your assumption your your inputs into your machines next is troubleshooting far away equipment uh, I went to a city uh, into an oil and gas office and uh, to meet to meet a friend and I realized that they are operating underground oil rigs which are in, in the bottom of the ocean floor half a kilometer down those oil rigs are operated from the CBD building from the city building they can operate not only operate they can troubleshoot equipment which are far away from them sometimes thousands of kilometers away if you have a digital twin in your company and from the comfort of your office you can change things you can make certain decisions uh, far away so that's that's the effectiveness of digital model and you can obviously manage a lot of complexity and uh, system to system complexity and you can create that linkage which is required uh, digital twin application let me now go back uh, directly to the application so there are a variety of applications you can see agriculture automobile aerospace healthcare city construction, drilling platform, electricity, vessels. Uh, we are mainly focusing in this one to manufacturing. Obviously, manufacturing is a very huge field. It's not about mechanical manufacturing. Many, many, many industries, everything you see around you is manufactured somewhere. So it doesn't really, uh, you know, controlled by a certain field. Any electrical, mechanical, civil, all of these industries, they need manufactured parts. So let's go to the next one i'm just diving into the application so here you can see a few photos which are showing you how digital twin could be used in industrial manufacturing setup so for example you know in a company like this you can have your colleagues you know looking at the digital model and making certain changes uh, to manufacture certain parts just a compressor or impeller or it could be pump or it could be anything but in car assembly uh, manufacturing like assembly line there are lots of changes required and those changes changes could be done if you have a digital model of that uh, by the tweaking by tweaking certain things on your digital model you can actually change your assembly line 
physically as well. So uh, other manufacturing com uh, building industry would be the construction industry. Do you know that uh, some of the cities are also digital twins? Singapore is uh, the first city to implement digital twin. They have a complete digital model of the whole Singapore city into a computer. And they can plan, they can predict the future, they can predict the maintenance of the city. Uh, city, you know, uh, uh, cities, uh, different buildings and bridges and lots of infrastructure. So a digital twin also helps in large cities as well. Now, <clears throat> continuing with the applications in manufacturing, as I said, uh, when we say manufacturing, you would be thinking, okay, I'm making something on a CNC machine. That's manufacturing. No. If the whole manufacturing process starts from the design uh, to manufacturing, to the operation, to the maintenance, all of these product life cycles must be considered. So in engineering design as well, you need to reduce the product time. That's very important if you're launching a new product. Uh, you need to reduce the cost as well. Uh, you will need to do some root cause analysis for that. And uh, you need to improve your product design and reliability. All of these is possible if you're a digital twin you can start improving your engineering and design side of it first. And then comes the production line. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, you can virtually commission your machine. So uh, if you have a digital model and if you have a client and you fitted some you know, large equipment there, you don't need to physically go there to commission it to start your machine for the first time. You can do, do it remotely. And you can provide you know, online support, uh, real-time support from a far distance. And then comes the predictive maintenance and remote diagnosis. Obviously, that's what I already said in oil rigs, for example, which are at the bottom of the ocean floor, they do remote maintenance and troubleshooting of that. So that is always, always possible. All right. Uh, some of the real world application uh, which are mentioned here. Uh, for example, you know, power tool maker, Black & Decker, they have actually created a digital twin to digitally model their assembly lines of their tools. Rolls-Royce, who doesn't know Rolls-Royce? They create you know, really, really great, very expensive cars. They have engine health management, which is having digital twin. It means all their engines around the world, which they have sold in, in the cars, they can remotely check their health. And they can suggest certain edits. And uh, that's fantastic, isn't it? That's why they're charging, you know, uh, you know, millions of uh, millions of dollars for a car. And F1 Racing already gave you an example. They have a digital copy of it. Chevron, they actually maintain and operate their oil field and refineries by creating digital twin. General Electric is also monitoring and controlling their turbines because they have wind farms and wind farms have a huge num huge and uh, many number of you know uh, uh, these windmills. Those windmills turbines need to be maintained and operated from remotely. Digital Twin example for a city is a Singapore, which I already said. It can uh, also monitor the efficiency and energy consumption of the whole city. And uh, it, they can actually improve the life of their citizens. That's why Singapore is one of the very, very uh, well-planned city, I would say. I've been there once. Now, uh, how can you adopt Digital Twin in industrial manufacturing? So. Adoption actually took systematically over the years of time. For example, starting with uh, 1970, uh, they didn't know the, what the digital twin is, but they were trying to do something with it by pairing certain technologies with their Apollo 13 mission. And they started in 1977. Some flight simulators uh, were also invented. 1982 is when Autodesk launched their 2D and 3D models. That was uh, one of the biggest steps where you can no doubt independently at the time, at the time, but you can still create 3D models of it. And uh, AutoCAD was quite popular during that time. Then 2002, Dr. Greaves introduced Digital Twin, where you can make an, a virtual replica of your physical model. NASA tried it, GE tried it, and then everyone is on the board now. So all the big industries, Siemens, GE, uh, Rolls-Royce, NASA, you name it, they are all wanting to have digital twins. In the COVID time right now, it's even more important where you can't really fly your expert staff members overseas or in remote locations to, to do certain things, to change, to troubleshoot. So a uh, digital twin would be ideal in this scenario. All right. <clears throat> so 
की आई आई ओ टी एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर सक्सेसफुल एडोप्शन ऑफ डिजिटल ट्वीन सो यू वुड नीड ऑब्वियसली एज यू कैन सी सेंसर्स सो सेंसर्स आर अ क्रिटिकल पार्ट and uh, these sensors are actually feeding data to your data network and these data network is then uh, storing the data analyzing analyzing the data and uh, you might need to do some application development these are all iiot iiot means industrial uh, internet of things technologies and uh, on the other hand you need to also be looking at fourth industrial revolution related technology which is plm for the life cycle management 3d models using any cad software smart automation vr and ar and digital simulation so amalgamation of these two technologies together can help you build digital twin for your industry <clears throat> sorry i can see some questions going on as well but uh, i may not be answer them right away but uh, we, we are noting down all these questions and we'll be uh, replying back uh, later on so uh, in terms of implementation which industries are actually putting their money their resources into digital twin so here you can see uh, digital twin implemented or in pilot stage 45% of respondents out of a survey obviously and not the whole population digital twin is planned in next 2 3 5 years almost 35% and 20% only have no plans so we are talking about big players in the industry right now uh, 20% of them don't plan it otherwise you can see 80% of them are planning for digital things so that's coming guys that's coming you have to be prepared for that can't really avoid it and in terms of you know investment value in terms of billions uh, obviously you can see around this time 2.7 billion dollars have been invested by the companies and in next few years or 3 2 to 3 years going to go up so high so that's the money people are putting the companies are putting into it in terms of uh, you know equipment life life cycle so as a as a mechanical or manufacturing engineer you are more concerned about how you will be using you know digital twin at a design stage production operation maintenance and end of life stages so design engineers so if you are a design engineer for example let's start from here uh, you can use digital twin in following ways so if you want to make a prototype so prototype new ideas and uh, stimulate a variety of what if scenarios using virtual tests that can include you know system interactions product testing customer experience you can even do virtual tests for detecting interference among various components of the equipment you know you can assess the ergonomics predicting equipment behavior under a variety of environmental and you know situations so main idea is to obviously to reduce the development cost so development cost must be are reduced and uh, then you can have your final product uh, which is having the digital twin of it and that can be utilized to improve the requirements and specifications for any future versions of your designs as well so that is all possible using this uh, in the design phase then comes the production so in the production uh, you can utilize digital twin solution to clarify certain specifications which were which have been made in the design stage uh, and you can supply that those clarifications to different component suppliers so that the final design can be optimized for manufacturing to test and optimize your production line yeah with respect to the layout or material flow or processes uh, before it can finally be installed at a manufacturing facility and to utilize technology for quality assurance that's also quite important bit in production now in terms of operation uh, of your machinery uh, after the equipment is delivered to the client you can set up the equipment remotely that is possible reducing the service costs to the customers and especially in the lockdowns of covid obviously it will reduce the cost or even if we are ready to pay you can't really fly there so after the equipment is set it's it starts running at a client site uh the technology can be used to by the manufacturer to accumulate all the data uh of the machine which is running remotely somewhere else at your client site and uh, you can do all sort of analysis using the data which you've been receiving from the operation of the actual machine and finally uh maintenance so 
it can help you you know better maintain the machine as well by tracking the information related to your operation of your equipment you can even predict upcoming failure of your component whatever you are producing uh, you can uh, predict the failure and you can diagnose the condition of the equipment and find the root cause of the problem as well so it's a really high tech you know uh, situation where you can pre-diagnose your condition of equipment through digital twin and even uh, your digital twin is capable to you know generate a list of parts which, which you will need in next six months because they can predict the failure let's say after four months your three pumps gonna fail so it will say okay order these three pumps uh, which you will be needing in three months time so that's possible and obviously end of life uh, kind of a scenario so it actually looks after you and your your company from design stage to the end of the life of your product life cycle. I hope it helps and it makes sense. Guys, a lot to cover today. Now, we'll, we'll be visiting certain uh, specific manufacturers. Uh, for example, the first one is Maserati. They use digital twin to reduce the cost and the time. What did they do? Uh, obviously, Maserati, if you don't know, it's a very high-end luxury car brand and uh, it's very powerful very expensive but uh, in order to maintain the aerodynamics because they want their cars to be faster and agile and uh, they in order to make that happen uh, they need to do some aerodynamics tests which are done in a wind tunnel now wind tunnel tests are highly expensive only airbus or boeing can afford certain tests in which they put the whole whole plane into the real world wind tunnel and see the performance of that particular plane in, in the tunnel. But Maserati, for Maserati, it's not as big as the Boeing, so they can't really afford the wind tunnel test. So what they did, they actually partnered with Simmons and they actually created a digital twin uh, through their PLM software. And uh, these PLM software was used to obtain all the data. They were actually looking forward to get it from wind tunnel. So digital enabled Maserati to reduce all the cost by you know, optimizing their parameters, by optimizing their design. And uh, uh, they had had to make you know, minimum number of physical prototype. So even if you have a wind tunnel, you have to make a prototype and put it in the wind tunnel, right? That's expensive. So that was reduced. So uh, more efficient and reducing time by 30%. So Maserati made a big move there uh, by adopting uh, digital twin. And <clears throat> moving forward, uh, Volvo. So Volvo actually also got it as well. So they actually did a lot of customization of their vehicle. And those vehicles uh, were actually customized in a way using digital twin that their assembly line had a less, num less cost into each QA station. So quality control costs were reduced in that one. Uh, I'm sorry we're running out uh, over the time because we started really late. So those who can you know, hang on, they can hang on. But if you have other commitments, obviously uh, you can leave and you can get the recording later. But it's very interesting part is coming now where I'll be showing you how you can yourself, you can gear up for digital twin technology in your own field. So Stara is another tractor manufacturer in Brazil they also implemented you know digital twin and they actually had a byproduct they not only effectively uh, you know optimize their operation of the equipment they also found a way which helped farmers reduce the seed use in their farms uh, by 21 percent and fertilizer use was also reduced by 19 percent so they were monitoring their tractors and the tractors who had, you know, the digital models running in the company. So they actually, from the data of the sensor data of the tractor, they could not only, you know, make the tractors better, they helped farmers reduce their consumption as well. So it was a win-win situation for both client and the company. Kaiser, on the other way, uh, they make air compressors. So they actually put air compressors into the client site and they said, uh, you don't need to you know pay for the compressor you don't need to maintain the compressor we'll do it what you need to do is how many meter cube of air you consume we will charge on based on that so it was very very good situation for the customers they had to just pay whatever they consume how much air they consume but on the other end Kaiser actually made sure 
all the data of the compressors which they were operating and maintaining were fed back to the digital model and it helped Kaiser achieve 60% reduction in, in unscheduled system downtime and all the costs. So that's amazing, isn't it? Right, moving forward. So if you are working in an industry, or uh, what industry would you try digital twin on? If you could give me just one industry you would like to apply digital twin in. I want your feedback in the chat box. I've given you many, many applications from space rocket to a tractor. Where would you try it if you can try digital twin? Civil engineering, farming, amazing. Yes, automobiles, factory, SpaceX, no. Shipbuilding, very nice, Ajay. Renewable manufacturing. Transformer manufacturing, very, very, very nice. Yep, all astrological engineering as well. Why not? <clears throat> Thank you so much, guys, for putting, giving me your input where you have, you know, listed a range of industries in which you think digital twin could be applied. And that's possible. Everything which you mentioned here, everything you can think of in terms of industry, whether it's engineering or non-engineering, you can apply digital twin to it. Very nice, guys. Thank you so much for your input. Moving forward from here, different tools uh, for digital twins. Obviously, depending on uh, what side of a digital twin you're working on, if you're working on physical system, you need to learn about the sensors, their measurements, their dynamics, and different processes. If you're working on the digital model, you need to know AR, VR, all sort of visualization and simulation technology. If you are working on the connecting the physical versus uh, digital model, you need to learn about Internet of Things, communication, collaboration, and security. Services side, you'd be learning about more algorithm and softwares. And on data side, obviously, you need to know how to collect data, how to store data, how to process data effectively. So those are the industries, different segments or sectors of digital twins. Uh, you would have potential uh, you know, interest. And a few more tools as per you know, uh, different services. It's basically a similar looking chart uh, giving you more way of classifying the areas of digital twin and uh, you know there are very 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 specific software and tools also available there for you know cognizing and controlling physical world you have this many tools then you have connections you have these tools for digital twin modeling you have so many tools you can see these are all software uh, which are listed here by different brands we can't really read all of them it would take forever but uh, these are the different areas or categories in which you could work on data management, and finally, service applications. So these are a variety of tools which you can use in Digital Twin. Depending on your company, your, your budget, and what you really want to achieve, you have to choose your software or your modeling technique through these tools. Now, there are some challenges as well uh, in terms of uh, data analytical changes, then IoT-related challenges, and then there are Digital Twin, twin challenges. Now challenges are more or less similar. Uh, let's focus on digital twin challenges which you would uh, have to face if you're trying to implement a digital model. So in the digital challenges, mainly you know IT infrastructure. You need to have a really solid IT infrastructure in place and you need to retrieve useful data out of the noise. Like you have you know heaps of data coming from all the sensors. How to extract useful data is a really important aspect privacy and security, somebody must not breach into your security system, your data, and might not, shouldn't be you know, manipulating your data. So privacy and security, trust uh, must be built into your system in a way uh, you can rely on your data really well. What are your expectations? You need to sometimes you know, modify your expectations based on the challenges which you would come across during the implementation of digital twin model. Standard modeling uh, uh, means you have to find out or trial a variety of softwares and technologies out there, which we had seen in the previous slides, and try to standardize what you like to use for your company, for your industry. 
and obviously domain modeling would be another thing where you'd be <clears throat> going under a particular domain and selecting certain iot related uh, and industry 4.0 related technology into that domain <clears throat> now <clears throat> next one is you know cognitive digital twin so digital twins are already helping organizations stay well ahead of digital disruptions you know how do they do it they try to understand the changing customer preferences customizations experiences now the use of cognitive computing increases uh, the ability and scientific disciplines in digital twin so technologies and techniques for example natural language processing nlp or machine learning or object visual recognition acoustic analysis signal processing these are some of the features augmenting you know traditional engineering skills so for example using cognitive to improve testing a digital twin uh, through the, through which you can determine which product test should be run more frequently uh, it can help you decide which should be retired so certain tests are useful some so certain type of engineering tests are really you know obsolete so cognitive digital twins can take us beyond human intuition to design and refine future machines because no no more you know one size fits all model would work for all the industries for all the companies so instead machines are individually customized so your digital model must be individually customized for your application that's because cognitive digital twin <clears throat> is not just about what we are building but for what for whom we are building so that's very important bit uh, the digital cognitive digital twin and what's the road ahead like you know there are heaps of companies heaps of, heaps of tools and technologies available to you to to try on to build your digital twin so going forward you know digital twin is expected to provide all the manufacturers real time data regarding the operation regarding the maintenance and when the equipment is reaching its end of life cycle for example so it is no longer required by the customer a uh, manufacturer can use digital twin in deciding how many years your machine would ra would last if it if it could be reused if it could be maintained or fixed if it could be reconditioned recycled or we just need to scrap it after a few years of time that all everything can be predicted so if you are giving handing out warranty or guarantee for your machine you can confidently do so this time uh, using you know prediction through your digital twin model so focus on partnering with various solution providers uh, to develop a digital twin initiative so uh, certain enterprise uh, technologies you know sap ibm microsoft all of these can help you you know automation system industrial equipment providers such as siemens honeywell g who also offer you a customized digital twin solutions so you can literally consult them uh, if you don't want to say you know it reinvent the wheel and uh, there are some product life cycle management companies as well for example ptc or dassault systems those can also help you build your digital twin so you need to seek help if you don't know where to start the process now this is the most important bit uh, another important bit how you as a, as a as an engineer can gear up for digital twin and the fourth industrial revolution in your own career doesn't matter what you are doing right now if you are studying if you are willing to study if you are working as a technical uh, technologist or technical engineer or professional engineer you can start with pursuing some first of all basic degree for example uh, choose mechanical or industrial automation if you are into manufacturing these advices are mainly for manufacturing mechanical engineers so that's why uh, core streams like evergreen streams like mechanical or automation uh start those courses learn those courses try to do some extra elective subjects try to learn python c language then try to go on big data analysis machine learning iot and cloud computing so those are the available elective sometime in the course or sometime you can pursue them externally as a short course then try to do some project based learning so if you learned a skill try to implement this new knowledge into your real life project remember you might have you know studied autocad some time but if you don't use it would you remember all the tools and techniques and tricks in that no you won't so you need to try it in real life projects now practice and develop vr and ar based project these technologies are so affordable for 20 30 dollars you can sometime you know buy virtual reality you know uh, i goggles and you can try certain things on your machines 
it's very cheap the technology is really cheap build truly multidisciplinary teams so don't don't surround yourself by just mechanical just electrical or just civil engineers try to have variety of disciplines in your team in your industry and they should work together to create your digital twin connect with industry experts who are already known as experts obviously you should listen to them and read technical papers attend webinars like this ones uh, hopefully it's uh, quite useful and break the geographical barriers so go online don't worry if, even if you are you know stationed at a remote island or on a, on a mine site don't worry courses are available study learn all of these online we have at eit one student was studying from antarctica can you believe it antarctica he was stationed there for some project and he was studying here so these are my tips for you guys how you can gear up for digital twin and industry 4.0 in your own career now uh, just a quick brief about eit so how eit engineering institute of technology where i work is gearing up for the future technologies such as digital twin or fourth industrial revolution we have already we have been already running online courses synchronous and asynchronous both technologies are used to actually deliver our courses throughout the world we have a global lecturer pool of 300 plus lecturers we are which are everywhere if you are studying a course lecturer is streaming into your classroom from canada from us from spain from new zealand from australia everywhere and a huge number of students from 146 plus countries are actually currently studying with EIT. Huge amount of resources in online libraries, and we already have virtual and remote labs for years. So this is just a background of EIT and how we run our courses. So mainly we run bachelor's, master's, and a doctorate we have launched as well. A doctorate courses in engineering, which is mechanical, electrical, automation, and civil. So this is just a background, quick background uh, about EIT. All right, so we are almost at the end of the session, guys. These are all the references I have used in case if you like to go through it. And in terms of summary, what is covered, what we have learned today, we have gone through the introduction of digital twin. We have known the definition of digital twin. How does it work? Three different levels we have learned here uh, in which you know digital model, digital shadow, and digital twin different benefits and mainly we focus on variety of application of digital twin into the industry for starting from nasa to f1 racing to g to different tractor manufacturers different manufacturers like g siemens so all of these applications were covered in this session tools for digital twins obviously there are heaps of tools to cover just the tools we need at least you know a day to cover all the tools but i have briefly touched on some of the tools which are used in digital twins and some challenges and we also discussed the road ahead i also gave you a tip on how you can improve your career by taking up some courses some key courses so that's the end of the session guys thank you so much for listening to me and i'm open for any questions really appreciate your presence today Us. Riley, would you like to take over? Oh, that's fine, guys. These are some of the upcoming courses which are coming up. If you like, uh, if you like, really like this session, you can go for the next one. And to receive your certificate you need to fill out the form at this link so on this link what i can do i can paste that link into my chat into your chat box so that you can actually click it and get your certificate because you can proudly display it on your desk saying that i attended uh, you know tech webinar on digital twins in manufacturing so that's the link i have pasted in the chat box guys click it Fill your details. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'm happy to help. Oh, thank you so much, Belvin, uh, for your kind comments. 
yes if for digital twin in water pumping yes absolutely you can use it there are existing technology already uh, which you can employ or deploy digital twin is a bigger domain ai is one of the tool which helps build digital twin so artificial intelligence uh, can help build the digital twin ai is more like a tool yes one of the example uh, is possibly you know the power plants for digital shadow where you are making changes in your power plant and those changes are reflected in your digital system but your digital system isn't if you make any changes in digital system it's not going to the power plant so that's kind of one of the example for digital shadow caterpillar manufacturing obviously in the top of my head i don't really remember or know at the moment because there are you know thousands of companies so it's impossible to uh, remember all of their names who are using digital twin thank you jill daniel kasule jacob nika thank you ravi yes you will get the slides and recording manual surely thank you miko ajay yeah marine sector definitely they must be using it already ajay and mia thank you so much for attending prototyping project it depends on the project uh, well, can't really answer that uh, but definitely any any kind of any prototyping for manufacturing you can apply digital tech twin to it there will be another seminar coming soon very soon on virtual manufacturing that's when you would be knowing more about the architecture of creating digital twin and virtual systems so tune in guys with eit and uh, you would learn Thank you, Tang, Ival, Vanaluson, Lori, Deku, Kashyap, Lee, Chata, Gugua, Ravi. Sure, just you know, sign up with our newsletter, and you would come across all these sessions, interesting, high-tech sessions coming up your ways. You will be automatically invited. Thank you, Zara, Christine, Tata, Rahul, Moses, Joan, Pascal. Oh, that's nice from Philippines. Thank you, Hindu, Anika, Jay, Risa. Take care, guys. Uh, we'll catch you later. Yes, Glenn, you can create digital twin with AutoCAD, but AutoCAD ju is just a tool. So you can't really create a digital twin by just using AutoCAD. You need other re relevant technologies uh, which are connecting with AutoCAD to build your digital twin. Oh, from Sri Lanka. Very nice. Yes, we offer a lot of scholarships for the right applicants. Thank you, Riley, for coordinating this. All right, guys, take care. Goodbye.